In this video, we're checking out the Chidi Tech X Maker. It looks really weird, but as you'll soon see, it's also really quite good and worthy of consideration, especially in education. Let's get started. How's it going guys, Angus here from Makers Muse, and this is the X Maker. Way back in 2016, I reviewed the X1, also from Chidi Tech, and I took quite a liking to its no-nonsense design, decent print quality, and reliability. That machine went on to live out the rest of its days at a makerspace, but I have to say, I miss it sometimes. So when Chidi Tech reached out to me about their new machine, the X Maker, I was indeed interested. This printer fits into what I would call the small print volume robust form factor category. With a conservative print volume of 170 by 150 by 160, it's smaller than an Ender 3, but still perfectly usable, but the frame is incredibly robust. Chidi Tech, like a lot of other 3D printing companies these days, have begun embracing injection molding, and this machine is no exception. Almost the entire thing is molded plastic, even its cute hat, which uh, helps trap heat in for ABS printing, is injection molded. Now, I personally prefer sheet metal and that brutal aesthetic, but there's no question what market this machine is aimed at. It has a heated bed with a magnetic print surface, which feels a little like a particularly rough build tack, and it seems to cope with high bed temps for ABS printing without any noticeable loss in magnetism. I say this in almost every review these days, but I am so happy that removable print surfaces are becoming standard now. They are by far my preferred print surface. Bed leveling is assisted manual, so fairly standard, but just look at that cantilevered design. That is two millimeter folded and welded sheet steel supported by 10 millimeter diameter steel rods. On a print bed this size, that's incredibly overkill, but I have to say, it does a fantastic job deadening vibration artifacts that are far too common on cantilevered bed designs like this. And what's with the chrome? It's such a ridiculous extra step, but I kind of love it. This thing has so many strange quirks. Can't say I love that ribbon cable path though, running the gauntlet between so many moving parts. Other features include a direct drive extruder, filament runout detection, power loss recovery, and a nice clear touch screen display and rear extraction fans, though their effect on fume reduction is questionable at best. Oh, and it also comes with this rolling pin. No joke, when I unboxed this machine, I had no idea what this was for. Well, it turns out Chidi Tech must have worked with a luggage manufacturer to produce this printer. So it has these extendable aluminium posts, which <laughs> makes me really want to attach casters to the back to make it a little luggage printer. You attach your filament to it and well, it does work and you can hold additional spools there for storage or quick swapping. But for whatever reason, there's also another spool holder which fits internally. So I guess you have two options. Connectivity is through USB stick, which is a lot nicer to manage than micro SD. And it comes stocked with video guides to help you get started or you can connect over Wi-Fi or Ethernet. There's a little camera in there for remote monitoring, but more on that later. I will mention that the inputs are somewhat weirdly spread out with power on the back with a power switch, storage on the right hand side, which is fine, but there's a mains voltage selector, which is super exposed on the left hand side. And I literally reached for it several times when running this machine. Smaller fingers could easily flick that switch. And for you US guys, if that happens, it's game over for the power supply. All right, so it's clear there's been a lot of work on the aesthetics and usability between the X Maker and the X1 back in 2016, but print quality and reliability are still number one priority. The first print was this really odd demo model, which is like a cylinder and a square. <laughs> it was on the USB stick. It doesn't really show much, so let's fire up the Chidi Tech slicer to slice some additional files, or should I say slicers. Education is clearly the market Chidi Tech is aiming for with this printer, so they bundled two slicers with it. Chidi Tech print professional version for us hobbyists and a heavily modified educational version with this child-friendly underwater theme. Both seem to be Cura under the hood, but there's no question some serious dev work has gone into modifying and skinning both versions. I have to say, while somewhat cringy, the educational slicer is indeed easy to use and understand, though I don't think there was permission granted to bundle these demo prints with it. But still, I printed the Benchy and Piggy Bank out at 0.15 millimeter layer heights, and honestly, these results are really quite nice in PLA, though it does look like cooling could be a little bit of an issue for some of the smaller details, with a little bit of blobbing in some areas where I had to move between points and the filament wasn't 
didn't have enough time to cool adequately. For clearances, I achieved down to 0.3 millimeter gaps, which was pretty fine before the parts welded. But again, it looks like those tiny blobs and weak cooling are the reason here. But these clear sides are removable, so perhaps just a few cooling fan tweaks, I reckon they could be overcome. For those of you who want to print in ABS, however, well, that enclosed print volume with its hat actually does a really good job keeping the heat in. With this dense infill ABS part coming out with zero perceivable warp, and a decent finish, a few extrusion accuracy issues, perhaps maybe caused by the gyroid infill touching the outside perimeters at different points, but this is the cheapest of the cheap poop colored ABS that I have, and really, that's a decent result. Sadly though, I couldn't get flexibles to work. The website specifies Shure 95A is compatible, and I only have 90A, which is a bit softer filament, and below on hand, and there seems to be an air gap between the feeder gear and the extruder hot end. So there was a kink in the filament when I tried to extrude and it quickly bound up. Semi-flex might work fine, but really if it can't do 90A, then it's not really something I'm interested in to print flexibles. Okay, let's talk about wireless connectivity and that camera because so many printers out there say they have Wi-Fi and they don't, or it might be a direct connection, not networked, etc., etc. So what's the story here? Well, regarding Wi-Fi connectivity in the slicer, it works great. You connect the machine to your router from the touchscreen interface, grab its IP in the slicer, either the professional or education flavor, and then bam, you can wirelessly send prints and then start them and it actually caches to the machine so then you don't have to have the computer on at all times. It sends really quick, which is fantastic. It's definitely a feature I'll be using quite often in future. Now the XMaker shows up as two separate Wi-Fi points, one for the printer control and one for the camera. If you wanna use the camera, you need to download an app called iCookieCam, which has an amazing 2.7 star average rating and I was pretty hesitant to install it on my phone. Look. It works, I was able to connect it to my home router and view the print bed remotely on my phone and it might be useful to some of you, but it's still too hacky for me to consider using very often at all. I would love to see it seamlessly integrated with the machine and perhaps even the slicer, so I'd have the ability to double check, for example, if filament's loaded and the print bed is clear from the slicer itself before sending. I think that'd be awesome just on its own, but that's just my opinion on the matter. So, final thoughts on this strange looking little printer. Well, all of those prints were basically done back to back overnight without me keeping an eye on them. That's why I have very little B-roll of them. Once leveled, it was good to go and I didn't have to change anything from that point on and the print surface is showing no real signs of wear. Most other printers I've been testing recently seem to drift print to print and getting that first layer right seems to change randomly sometimes. Now I'm not saying this print is perfect, no printer I have ever tested has been, but it seems to have inherited that repeatability that I really enjoyed when testing the Chidi Tech X1 out all those years ago. It just looks a little bit more gaudy now. The print bed is overkill. It's small and only moves in the Z direction, so that probably helps. But if you're time poor and can't afford to spend the time re-leveling and tweaking between each print, it's a pretty nice thing to have. The price point is agreeable too, at 499 USD, down to almost 100 bucks off that during flash sales if you keep your eye out. That's the same price as the X1 was back in 2016, but now we have heaps of additional usability tweaks, which is something I personally prefer to see. Instead of just cutting quality back to get the price lower, this has got better usability improvements, but the price has stayed much the same. It is a smaller print volume for the price compared to a, like an Ender i3 or other i3 style machine for sure. But when it comes down to smaller but more rigidly built to larger but more exposed, really, that's your call. If you think the Chidi Tech X Maker is the printer for you, there is links in the video description and full disclosure, Chidi Tech sent me this machine free of charge for purpose of review and all opinions are my own. Thanks for watching guys, bye.